Hey, it's me, Vicky Marie. And I thought I'd just do something a little bit different that might make you laugh um, today, a little bit lighter. What do we think of the... Um, oh, so sorry, just let me say first. Thank you so much to all my subscribers. Anyone who's liked my videos, shared my videos, watched my videos, participated in the chat, and special thanks to uh, to my memberships, uh, my members, uh, and anyone who sent me a super or a Kofi or PayPal'd me. Um, but the most important thing you can do to support my channel, and I really could not do this channel without support. It's not only the financial support; it's the support of knowing that people want to watch it. Uh, so when I get a bit fed up and I think. Oh, you know, um, it's all a bit depressing because obviously I concentrate on true crime and it can get depressing. Um, what keeps me going are your emails, your support, your comments, etc. So thank you so much, everyone. Okay, so Nessie, the Loch Ness monster. I mean, this is just this is just so typically. Uh, well, British and Scottish, it's like we love Nessie, don't we? You know, and Nessie generates, this is Loch Ness on the picture that you can see. This is Loch Ness in Scotland. You know, Scotland has many beautiful lochs. I haven't been to Loch Ness, but I've been to Loch Lomond, which is also very beautiful. And it's funny, really, isn't it? Because this legend only is in Loch Ness. You know, there's lots of other lochs. Why haven't they got the same legends? I don't know if Loch Ness is the biggest one or, you know, but the, this legend started, you know, centuries ago. Uh, maybe that that's why, that, because it goes right back. Let me get, it goes right back to St. Columba, uh, who was a saint in 565. So that's how far it goes back. It goes back 1,500 years, practically. Um, and the earliest report of a monster in the vicinity of Loch Ness appeared in the life of St. Columba, written in the 7th century AD. So apparently the Irish monk St. Columba was staying in the land of the Picts with his companions, and he encountered local residents burying a man by the side of the River Ness. And they explained that this man had been swimming in the river when he was attacked by a water beast that mauled him and dragged him underwater despite their efforts to rescue him by boat. So uh, Columba, very nice of him, he sent one of his followers to swim across the river. And uh, apparently the beast approached him, but Columba made the sign of the cross and said, go no further do not touch the man, go back at once. And the creature stopped as if it had been pulled back by ropes and fled. And then Columba's men in the pits gave thanks for what they perceived as a miracle. Now, this story is actually in the River Ness rather than Loch Ness, but this is believed to be where the whole thing started and is at uh, you know a lot of people think it is proof of this creature's existence from as early as the sixth century you know there were lots of stories about water beasts in those times because you know things that we have, you know now like killer whales or dolphins even or seals and uh, walruses etc all those things would have been considered river beasts in those times so you know we we have to sort of take it with a pinch of salt in a way but obviously something happened something happened for it uh, it seems you know it's like all these stories from centuries ago it's likely that something happened whether you believe then the um, perspective that was put on it at the time is another matter. So, yeah, that was um, sort of how it started. And actually, oh, gosh, now there is, I thought, oh, um, there are so many different 
reputed photos, sightings of this monster, the Loch Ness Monster. thing is, it's a huge tourist attraction as well. People come from all over the world to Loch Ness. I want to go now. I want to go to Loch Ness. And, um, you know, to hope that they might catch a glimpse of the monster or, you know, to um, hoping they can get their own photo of it, etc. Now, in 2003, let's just have a look. And I just perhaps need to get that up. I think it was 2003, but I'm just going to check. The BBC. Yeah. Let's share this tab. So this was a photo that was taken um, at, at some point. When was this? Oh, so 1934. This photo was supposedly of the monster, but it's been... All the photos that have been taken up to now or sightings, or things, they've more or less been discredited as fakes. Um some people think this might have been an elephant swimming in the lake. I mean, it does look like an elephant's trunk because apparently circuses of the day, they let their elephants, uh, you know, go in the rivers, etc. But I wouldn't have thought they let it go in the lake. I know elephants can swim, um, but yeah, it could be an elephant's trunk. Who knows? It could be anything really, isn't it? At the end of the day, we don't know what it was. But at some point, let's see if it's got the actual year that they did it now. I think it was 2003. Yeah. Let's have a look at this. Yeah, the BBC proves that Nessie does not exist. And this, was on, this article was on the 27th of July, 2003. So they went... <laughs> I love this photo. What we would like to believe, you know, we want to. We want to believe that Nessie is in there, don't we? Of course we do. We want to believe it. Anyway, apparently using 600 separate sonar beams and satellite navigation technology, they maybe they need to get Peter Folding out there to ensure that none of the lock was missed. Mind you, you know, anyway, let's not go into that. The team surveyed the waters uh, that are said to hide Scotland's legendary tourist attraction, but found no trace of the monster. Previous reported sightings of the beast had led to speculation that it might be a plesiosaur, a marine reptile which died out with the dinosaurs. And they were convinced that this animal could have survived when all the other dinosaurs died, but this animal could have survived in the cold waters of Loch Ness. Despite the normal preference of marine reptiles for subtropical waters. So they went from shoreline to shoreline, top to bottom. They used sonar equipment, etc. And um, yeah, they found nothing. Nada. Zilch. So they, they think that people see what they want to see. And, you know, I do think it's true. I do think it's true. Sometimes your eyes can play tricks on you. Um, one, uh, many years ago when I was walking in the woods in, um, in Berkshire, when I lived in Reading, and I used to love walking through the woods and a fr friend of mine and I, we went walking through the woods and it was a really weird day that day with my little poodle. And, uh, well, first of all, there was a, nearly a, fat, a fire. This farmer in a tractor came towards us and said, "Get, go away, you know, get, get out of here. There's a fire and it's spreading this way. So we had to turn around and go a different way to what we would normally have gone, the walk that we knew. And we ended up in these woods that we didn't know at all. And it was very eerie. There were, like, dead animals everywhere and, um, you know... <laughs> we were just sort of looking at each other like how are we going to get out of here because we were completely lost and it was one of those woods where it's black you know because the the trees cover you and you, the, the the sunlight wasn't filtering through I mean it was really 
quite scary. So, you know, it wasn't because we used to follow like walks. I had a book of walks and we'd follow those and we knew them uh, like the back of our hands. But we ended up in this really unfamiliar place. And as I say, we saw a couple of animals on the floor that had been obviously been killed, like uh, attacked and killed, you know, rabbits and things like that. So we start to get, you know, I'm worrying about my little dog, <laughs> you know, and we're worrying about ourselves. And then suddenly, just over to the right, we saw uh, what looked like a, a puma just sat watching us from the over to the right hand, you know, a big cat. Gosh, well, you can imagine, can't you? We absolutely shit ourselves. And oh my, and I was sort of, as I was looking at, I looked at my friend and she was looking at, and then she looked at me and it was like, run, you know, these were days when I could run, I'd be, I'd be dead now because I wouldn't be able to run, but, uh, and off we went. And when I got home and I told my, uh, boyfriend about it, my partner about it, he's like, oh, rubbish, rubbish, you know, you know, there's no such, and then we started, uh, sort of trying to find out if they were, you know, you know, there's always been rumours that there are big cats roaming around Britain, isn't there? And this was a black, like, looked like a puma to me or a jaguar. Anyway, uh, my boyfriend, he, he wouldn't have it, you know, it's like, no, no way, no way, let's go back, let's go back. So off we went back to this same woods. And do you know where it was? It was a tree, like a tree trunk. It was, we suddenly, because we're walking along, and we suddenly went, oh, my God, there it is. And, of course, I realised it hadn't moved from the last time that I saw it. But it was like a broken tree, and it had the ears, and it just, just from the distance there, when you just looked in the shadows, because even my partner went, oh, my God, it's there. But that I said to him, oh, I don't think it's moved since the last time. I'm sorry, so I don't think it's really a big cat. Anyway, so it wasn't, it was a tree. So what I'm saying is sometimes your eyes can play tricks on you, can't they? You see things that you think are real. But, of course, the interesting, the reason I'm doing this video about the Loch Ness Monster today, or as much as it's interesting at any time, I think, um, is there have been, uh, there was recently, wasn't there last week, another expedition, another uh, big investigation as to what was there really um, a Loch Ness monster and now two new pictures have um, emerged which is, I just find interesting because uh, let's see which is the first one yeah so this is the first one that came out now personally to me it looks like two black bin bags floating but you know, I don't know, or rocks or whatever, but it'll be, you know, I presume it'll go off and be, I've just realised I'm on the Telegraph one and they won't, uh, they don't let you, where's the other one that picks out? Let's find one that can actually read about it, who took it. So, yeah, a new photo of the Loch Ness Monster. So all those years when I was growing up, we were looking at that pit, that other pitch that looks a bit like an elephant, um, you know, and believe it because, you know, we didn't know any different. As far as we were concerned, that was genuine. Now we've got other photos that have emerged. Images taken by a photographer in 2018, but just released, of what looked like a creature spinning and rolling on the surface of Loch Ness. Oh, it was amazing. This is the time, though, isn't it? If you're going to get a monster sighting, right? If you're going to see something big and mysterious swimming around in these waters, this is the time where you're going to see it. Steve Feltham's been searching for Nessie for more than 30 years. The beauty. Oh, I bet he's really pissed off. She just goes there on holiday and uh, catches, let's go back to the beginning and see it again. Could these be pictures of the Loch Ness Monster? Images taken by a photographer in 2018, 
but just released of what looked like a creature spinning and rolling on the oh, surface oh, of Loch Ness. This is the time now, isn't it? If you're going to get a monster sighting, right? Like, if you're going to see something again. with pictures and there's a clear focused image in the middle of it that I, I can't instantly explain what it is. I've not seen images from the surface of the water that have been as good as this taken in the last 30 years. The pictures were released after last weekend when hundreds of people took part in the biggest hunt for Nessie in 50 years. Though bad weather hampered the use of drones and after underwater microphones picked up strange sounds. Yeah, and the microphones did pick up some sounds and they're all being analysed now. Investigators realised they'd forgotten to turn on their recording equipment. What? What? They've forgotten to turn on their recording equipment. Oh, what? Anyway, this is the old photo. Since the 30s, believers have desperately tried to solve the mystery of this mythical creature. With sporadic photos and reported sightings. My God, that is so beautiful. Spurring some on, seen by others as hoaxes or just unclear and unprovable. I've travelled to every continent in the world filming all sorts of amazing wildlife. So, uh, and especially when you're dealing with water, you know, water plays a lot of tricks on you. And, uh, you know, it's a very difficult environment. But this is uh, quite intriguing, uh, this photograph. And I'd, I'd love to know more about it and see the sequence of pictures. Because one picture on its own is just a picture. It could be rocks, it could be, it could be a log. Whatever these photos really show out there on the water, it's clear the oh, hunt God, for I'm Nessie ready. continues. Rachel Venables. Uh, this is the time when you're going to see it. Steve Feltham's been searching for Nessie for more than 30 years. Released so this lady... of what looked like a creature spinning and rolling oh, on the surface like the of Loch Ness. That? This is the time now, isn't it? If you're going to get a monster sighting, right? Well, it's fancy if you're going to see that and not big and mysterious telling everybody about it. But the just time. released of what looked like a creature spinning and rolling on the surface of Loch Ness. This is the time now, isn't it? If you're going to get a monster sighting, right? So, what do you think? Now, not only that, but there's been. An, so, because uh, that person. Um, took that picture quite a long time ago. Uh, was it 2018? She said she didn't want to publicise the picture because she feared public ridicule. No, no, Chloe. Uh, we, would we would have liked to have seen it. We well, I definitely would have liked to have seen it. I certainly wouldn't have read, uh, ridiculed anybody. Right, let's have a look at the... So when she came out with that photo... Uh, somebody else then came out with a photo that they too had been scared to show. Uh, really, I suppose, you know, I can see it in a way, but gosh, you'd be, God, if you actually took a photo, because I love mysteries like that. We all love mysteries, don't we? And um, the Loch Ness monster, Nessie, that's, you know, it's just such an endearing sort of thought. I mean, I don't know why. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to be on a boat in the middle of the lock and Nessie come up like, but, um, you know, just the thought that there may be uh, a monster in there, it's just nice to think about. So this is the second photo. So that Charlotte Robinson, who's only 12 years old, took this picture uh, of something emerging from Loch Ness on August the 17th, again in 2018. That's strange, isn't it? Both in 2018. Um, so Gary Campbell, the keeper of the official Loch Ness Monster Sightings Register. What a job title. I want to do that job. I want to be the keeper of the official Loch Ness Monster Sightings Register. Honest to God, what a fantastic job. Uh, and he says that these incidents are proof of the creature's existence. 
These pictures by Miss Kelly and Charlotte are the best of Nessie ever taken and are totally baffling. But it's nice to have some more modern pictures to speculate over. I expect they'll send them off to some places and they'll say, no, no, it's not true. But, you know, it all adds up to the evidence that there is definitely something unexplained in Loch Ness. Charlotte said the creature she saw had a neck and its head was in the shape of a hook. It could be a fin, couldn't it? it, uh, it could, I, well, I don't know. It could be anything. Uh, it quickly disappeared before re-emerging elsewhere. At this point, she decided to take out her cell phone and take a photo showing what was emerging from the Scottish lake again. I just took what I saw, the girl said. It was black. I didn't know how far out it was in the water. I'm not good at judging distances. She said it was up for less than a minute. So her sighting came just four days after Kelly had snapped what she believed to be the beast. Yeah. So we've got two pictures now, two new pictures. We've got some so sonar, sonic noises heard while they were doing But they forgot to turn on, I mean, I'm sorry. They forgot to turn on the, they're not very good, are they, at being monster hunters? Um, anyway, so now her mum believes in it. She pulled out. Oh, so can you see these photos? Just let me check, make sure you can see these, yeah. I think this is like, it's, it's wow. I mean, look. Yeah. See, in these days, when we off cell phones, etc., they should be, there should be more photos, really, shouldn't they? And this is the other one, further down. Oh, she is a photographer, Chloe Kelly. She says her and her husband, Scott, were having lunch at the Doris Inn on the banks of the lot the day she snapped shots. I was just taking photos with my Canon camera of Scott and our daughter, Elisa, who was about five when two, about 200 metres from the shore, moving right to left at a steady speed, was this creature, she recently told the Telegraph. It was spinning and rolling at times. We never saw a head or neck. After a couple of minutes, it just disappeared and we never saw it again. While she couldn't get an image clearly showing the beast's length, she estimated that the two parts were visible that were visible were less than two metres long combined. All oh, right, so they're like, gosh, I mean, what do you think? I mean, that there, it does look like, uh, yeah, but oh, I can see that there's, yeah, very interesting, very exciting. At first, I wondered if it was an otter or a pair of otters or a seal. But we never saw a head and it never came up again for air. It was making a strange movement on the surface. We did not hear any sound. These were strange shapes below the surface. I could not make out any colours. The water was dark. Gosh. Oh, here's Kelly. I don't know what it was, but it was definitely a creature, an animal. At the time, I did not want to face public ridicule by making the photos public. She added that she's long be believed in the Loch Ness creature's existence, but I didn't. I don't know what it is. What I saw looked like a serpent. It was definitely a creature and it was moving. And Campbell of that register of Loch Ness, <laughs> Loch Ness monster sightings with the best job in the world. It appears that the creature was moving between Doris and Fort Augustus. So there you go. Those are photos. There's the proof. Here's the little girl's photos. That looks a bit like a submarine, that one. But, um, yeah, that, 
Is that near the shore? That sh wouldn't that couldn't that be a dog in the water? I don't know. I don't know. I, look, I'm not trying to uh, debunk these theories. I'd love to believe. I love. I love these. You know, to believe that there is a monster in there or a, a large creature in there, and it's good for um, the tourist industry if nothing else. So yeah, when are we going to Loch Ness? I think we need to have a field trip. To go to Loch Ness and see if we can spot anything. It does look a little bit like a dog, but it's too far out. Yeah, you wouldn't have a dog uh, swimming that far out, surely. She said it had a hook-like head. Wow. Yeah. So what do you think? So apparently all the things that the people found in this latest uh, big sort of investigation where they forgot to turn on the, the microphones. God, I just cannot believe that. Anyway, um, uh, and maybe it's not true. Maybe they're just saying that. You know, at the end of the day, people want to keep this legend alive, you know, for various reasons. It's fun. It's good for the tourist industry. It's not doing anyone any harm and people go there it's a beautiful place and if they hope they can see the monster but having these two people come out now who saw it supposedly the same year in 2018 and who have sat on these photos makes you wonder if there are more people out there who have photos etc but again they don't want to share them maybe because you know they they don't want people you, people to think they're they're daft or you know you can talk yourself out of things can't you you know you can look at things and think oh no I, you know, sometimes strange things do happen and you talk yourself out of it um but yeah let me know in comments what you think but i just thought it'd be a, a interesting to sort of have a look at those things um oh sorry then there was something else that i wanted to talk about as well i don't know if you know i certainly didn't know but there's other Loch Ness monsters, well, obviously not Loch Ness monsters, but other similar um, things. That in American folklore, Champ or Champy is the name of a lake monster said to live in Lake Champlain, which is a 201 kilometer long body of fresh water shared by New York and Vermont, with some of it extending into Quebec, Canada. And, of course, it's a draw for uh, tourism. So that's Champ in America. In Canadian folklore, the Ogopogo is a lake monster said to inhabit Okanagan Lake in British Columbia, Canada. Uh, so some scholars have, you know, say that it's true. And it, it's... Similar to the Loch Ness Monster, it's a, an urban legend in that area. I personally had never heard of these. Uh, now, do you think the Loch Ness Monster is more famous because there are actually photos? I don't think know if there are photos of these others. So there's Champ in America, there's Ogopogo in Canada, and then in Georgia folklore, the Altamahaha, is a legendary creature uh, alleged to inhabit habit, the myriad small streams and abandoned rice fields near the mouth of the Altamaha River in southeastern Georgia. And the sightings are particularly reported around Darien and elsewhere in McIntosh County. Let's see if I, I don't think there are any photos though. No, there's no photos. There's only drawings. That's probably why Nessie is more, yeah. It's probably why the Loch Ness Monster is more famous across the world because of the photo. Yeah, there's no photos of the others. So very interesting. So what do you think? Do you think there are these creatures? You know, why not? I mean, why not? Uh, I hope so. I hope there are. Yeah, I like these sort of um, issues. I mean, you know, the thing is, we have so much technology nowadays, you would think 
that we would find because surely it can't still be the same Nessie that it was from 1933 if there was one uh wouldn't they i mean how long do they live <laughs> you know i don't well we've got to prove that they're real first i suppose before we try and work out how long they live you know bodies never been found you know of of like a dead one or whatever so yeah there's been a few fake like there was some prints found but they were proven to be fake you know so there's been a lot of fakery as well so i think now there couldn't be any as much fakery because we have too much um technology to discover fakery i suppose anyway we'll see if anything comes of that recent um investigation they've done they've gone away now to assess all the information that they collected they heard the note two Twice they heard noises, but they didn't turn on the um, the sonic radar or whatever. Okay, so thank you. Thank you for watching this with me. I hope you found it interesting like I do. It's nice, a little break from true crime, but we're back to it tonight. Uh, in the Serial Killer Sunday, we're going to be looking at Ted Bundy. But I don't, you know, I, I wanted to look at some different uh things about ted bundy like his the the, the relationships he had uh why women were totally enthralled by him literally enthralled by him and still in love with him even after knowing what he'd done uh also i wanted to look at his family his mom his brother they're sort of some some when we we're going to look at some videos of what they had to say and also we're going to look at carol de Ronge, who was the one that got away, she did get away from, and, and she was a thorn in his side. You know, he was so angry that she got away from him and um, good for her. And she's, you know, she, she testified against him in court and she's still talking about him. The thing is, you know, although this is a long time ago, these things, they have to be kept current because it can never be forgotten because they're lessons to be learned. Ted Bundy to, to me, and not only to me, but to everyone, I think is especially intriguing because there's you can see why women would find him attractive. He came from what's tech, you know, from what the family say it was a fantastic home, you know, like he was there was no signs. Or there were no signs, but of course they found a couple of little signs here and now that they talk about now that they talk about them but there was nothing at the time he was intelligent he was charismatic he was handsome he was charming he was all the things uh but also he was a psychopathic serial killer anyway we're going to look at that later so i'll see you later and remember to always live and love wisely <laughs> watch out for Loch Ness monsters and I will see you very soon in the next video. Until then, may your God go with you. Thank you.